Hey everyone, Psychotronic Squirt Gun coming back at you with another haul. So this is uh, the old school method I'm returning to. I'll be doing these once a week. And I'm not done with my blog spot, but I did post it. The trading program is in the link below. And um, every week it's growing. The blog spot's growing to reflect the doubles I have for trade and what I have uh, in my personal uh, collection. If you're so you can get if you ever are curious to see where I'm at with my uh, runs. Right. Anyway, let's get right into this. OK, we'll start it off with 1972's um, Weird War number nine. I'm slowly getting into these uh, bronze. Um, I, I like to keep it weird, though. I like weird science fiction. I do kind of like weird uh, horror, um, like the supernatural weird stuff, you know? So let's take a look inside here. I know Easy Comic Reader has a bunch of these. Here's what the uh, inside kind of looks like. Well, kind of it is, right? This is what it looks like on the inside. Yeah, easy comic reader. And the thing about these 70s comics is that there's a lot of uh, advertisements, but they're kind of neat, right? Especially when these comics are um, so old. They're actually older than a lot of us on the planet right now, right? But yeah, so shout out to easy comic reader. I know he has a bunch of these. I'm hoping he doesn't have this one. I'll totally trade with him. Next up, 1981, Captain America, 259. Uh, you have Mike Zeck doing the covers and the insides. Um, I collect the Mike Zeck Captain America. Dave uh, Michelini, is that how you pronounce his name? Uh, Michelini does the uh, writing. Good old-fashioned uh, Marvel throwdown, right? Between Cap and uh, one of Spidey's A-lister uh, villains. Pretty cool, right? Got this at the LCS. That's not so L. <laughs> it's 40 minutes away. I got this one and this one there. I paid up for them on uh, free comic book day. But most of these comics I'm just pulling from uh, randomly from the chaotic area of the uh, of the room. Okay, 1989's uh, Badger Goes Berserk. I collect Badger. Did not have that number one. Found it in a 25 cent bin during free comic book day. Very cool. There's different artists with, uh, within here. But as you know, I like my early uh, first. As I say, my indies from the 80s. Here's another indie from the 80s. 1985. Uh, First Adventures, number one. Found that in the quarter bins. It's got Dynamo Joe, Whisper, Blaze, uh, Blaze Barlow, right? From First, so pretty cool. It's kind of like a DC, uh, no, a Dark Horse Presents type thing. Different uh, stories and art and stuff. The back art looks the best, but this is pretty good too. Okay, 1985 from uh, Blackthorn Publishing. It's uh, Merlin Realm in 3D. <laughs> I don't have my uh, 3D glasses yet, but I'm sure I'll find a pair someday. And as you can tell, it has all that weird... It's really weird to look at with your eyes, but uh, hopefully it pops out. And, you know, it's made in the 80s, so... 
It's even got a wraparound, I think. No, that's not a wraparound, but it's got a cool back. Okay, 1987. X-Factor 18. I love my Jean Grey. Um, cool uh, Walter Simonson cover. I think I needed this for my run. Maybe I have the new stand, and this is the direct... But you gotta love uh, some early X Factor. It's okay. It's not the. It's not like '80s, early '80s X Men or anything like that. But it's still pretty cool. I liked it when I was a kid. Okay, 1990, Detective Comics 624. I didn't have that one, and I found it for a dollar at half price books. Um, yeah, I have most of this too, but pretty cool. And yeah, it's got Flint Henry art in there, you guys. Whenever you see Flint he Henry, uh, he might not be well known, but he's really good. He's done some great stuff. He's the guy that did that Law Dog, for anyone who watches my videos. Um, but yeah, really good artist. So you see anything by Flint Henry, definitely go for it. The cover's okay. It's, the insides are awesome. Okay, 2011. It's, uh, Batman 709. Um, I collect my Batman. Filthy 50 Center. You know I got it at the Half Price Books. Um, Got to make sure I include my Filthy 50 Centers. Uh, David Hine is an okay writer. Um, he did the uh, Spider-Man The War, which I enjoyed. I still have those. The art's pretty good. Yeah, anything by Gillum March... I generally pick up and I enjoy. He's a he's a great modern artist. The last name is March. Give him March. Okay, another awesome uh, modern artist is coming up here. Uh, 2019 Batman King Kings of Fear. I could get that stamp off number six. I'm I think I haven't tried doing that yet. I shouldn't say that, but um, it's got Kelly Jones art. It's a great cover um i picked this up on the cheap when i uh when i find it i do enjoy kelly jones not everyone does because of the ears are too long <laughs> but um yeah it's cool it's called artistic license right Okay, 1977, Doctor Strange 23, I uh, picked that up on an eBay haul, super cheap, a whole bunch of Doctor Strange, um, got some, uh, featuring some Jim Starlin pencils, I know the Frank uh, Brunner was during this time on uh, Doctor Strange, but I guess Starlin's here. Pretty cool. Marv uh, Wolfman, of course, does the um, the writing. But yeah, I collect Doctor Strange. So does uh, Easy Comic Reader. <laughs> okay, 1983. Capital Comics, Whisper, number one. You know where I got it. Um, Capital, I think it's, uh, later, uh, purchased by First Comics, or they changed the name or something like that. I'm sure someone knows the, uh, knows the story, but Whisper looks cool. I'll definitely read this one. This is great, man. I, I miss doing these old school hauls. I, something about it. I, I just, I find it uh, relaxing for me, just babbling about it. 
I do the same thing uh, in the live streams. And I'm addicted to live streams now. And that's part of the reason why I'm doing this too. Is to try to break the habit of me just always going live. <laughs> okay, 1992. Uh, Brave and the Bull, number three. Butcher. Oh, it's a, well, it's Green Arrow. And uh, Butcher. And who's this other person? Oh, the question. Awesome. Yeah, I couldn't see that for some reason. <laughs> anyway, yeah, that's the question. And th there's the butcher. <laughs> and there's Green Arrow. Never heard of the butcher. But, um, yeah, this is uh, written by Mike, Mike Grail, so it should be fun. The art's okay. But, I, I, again, I got this at Half Price Books on the cheap, and... I just can't leave things alone, like, you know. And maybe this Brave and the Bold uh, era is good. Okay, shout out to Big Elbow. Um, I would have never thought to pick this up, but I got this for 25 cents. It's uh, one of those DC weeklies. And he fe he featured it in one of his uh, comic calls. You guys should totally sub up uh, to Big Elbow because he really does look for the awesome art, you know, on the cheap, kind of like how I do. But look at this, man. <laughs> Holy moly. I don't know if you guys could see that. But um, it's one-page stories. I got this for a quarter. Yeah, so that's that's really cool. So that's a score for for a quarter. What the heck? Okay, two thousand and seven, uh, Ultimate Fantastic Four, forty three. I just pick up Ultimate Fantastic Four if I can get it for a quarter or two quarters or something. Um, I don't know why. I'm just in the habit of doing that. I'm kind of in the habit of doing that with X-Men, too. Cause, but the it's okay. It seems all right. I don't know. You tell me. I guess the early 2000s is when uh, Ultimate, the Ultimate line was really interesting. But this kind, this is kind of like a, I don't know, it's, it's kind of blurred to me the, the inks are super dark and making everything muddy I don't understand that anyway maybe you like it <laughs> okay 1983 uh, Iron Man 176 I think I got that from my uh, friend Dave shout out to Dave Thank you, buddy. Um, I also still have your Ewoks that I'm going to return to you. Dude gave me a bunch of like Star Wars Ewoks. And one of them was a $300 book. And I'm like, you can have this one back. Because <laughs> he's a buddy, you know. But that's what's cool about the internet. A lot of, you know, I have... You know, friends are just like, oh, yeah, comic books. Oh, okay, here, do this. Here, have that. <laughs> That's an exaggeration, of course, but, you know, you know what I mean. 1986. Nexus 17. First Comics. Steve Rude. Shout out to the Gray Man's channel. They, they um, a couple weeks ago... Interviewed Steve Rude. You should check that out. And uh, what he's up to currently. But yeah, I am loving this uh, Nexus by him. I'll always remember what uh, Sleepy Reader 666 said. He said this is like if Kirby did Space Ghost. <laughs> Something like that. Which is pretty cool. Nice, huh? 
1990. Um, it has a filthy 50 center on it and a, a rip. Um, I don't, but I think I got that for a quarter actually. You know, obviously, I don't think many people would want that. I do, I'm interested in E Man, so I go for it, you know. Oh, yeah, we got a uh, gatefold. Pretty cool. The inside art's okay. Uh, nothing to really blow my mind away with, but I love the indies from the 80s. I can't walk away from them. Maybe they'll end up in the recycle bin someday, or maybe in someone's home where they too can appreciate that. 1994, Malibu Comics. It's Rune, number four, Barry Windsor Smith, um, cover. I always look out for Barry Windsor Smith on Rune. Got this for 50 cents. Look at this, come on. Gotta love the colors and stuff. You know, you guys, and this is in dollar bins, so yay us, right? <laughs> Barry Windsor Smith, the great uh, known artist here. Okay, so um, 1986, Scout number nine. I think I needed that for my run. You know where I got it because the Filthy 50 Center stamps on it. You know I like my Emmanuel Santana. I, I like that he goes on peyote trips and uh, and has a spirit guide and all that. But I think that um, Timothy Truman actually drops that type of stuff after a while. At least that's what someone told me on the internet. People are so brave on the internet. They're rude, you know, and brave. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, pretty freaking cool, huh? 1987, Eagle number eight. I always, I see Eagle, I just get it. Cool martial arts, dude. Cool back, I guess. Yeah, I guess uh, a lot of people didn't like the uh, indies from the 80s back in the day because uh, the shelves got flooded, you know? Shelves in the 80s and the uh, on the comic stands were flooded with this stuff, the direct market. But I think it's beautiful, especially compared to, uh, I don't know, a lot of modern stuff. I'm digging it. Okay, 1975, Kamandi, the, the uh, last boy on Earth, number 25. Pretty cool. It's got beautiful uh, Jack Kirby art within. Come on, D, right? Check out this next one. This is going to be awesome. <laughs> Pretty cool. I think I got this from Dave, too. Yeah, dude. Freak show. Awesome, right? Excellent. 1977 is a reprint though. Um, it's Marvel's Greatest Comics 72 with more Jack Kirby goodness. You guys can get this in dollar bins for the most part. And you have more awesome Jack Kirby. With uh, more um, advertisements too. They were making their money in the 70s, I bet. Okay, I got this for a quarter, you guys. This came out last year. Sure, it's got a bend on it, you know? But um, I didn't have this issue of uh, Void Ri Rivals, the Enron Universe, number four. I think I only have the first three or something. And I got that for a quarter so I could read the story. Um, yeah, they're probably like, no, nobody wants that, so we'll do it for a quarter. Which is, I guess is cool. And what there's I know there's a lot of uh, 
Um, a lot of fans of Void Rivals. So it's cool. And the G.I. Joe and current G.I. Joe and uh, Transformer uh, Universe. Year 2000. Uh, Starman 61 came out. You know, Higgy Pop got me into Starman. I read a first cup, the first couple of these. Jack Knight's pretty cool. I do like the story. I like the antagonists. There's like the mist. The mist destroyed his family in the beginning of the series. And then there's this weird guy, the shadow, kind of like a shadow of some sort. But every issue, I guess, has different type of artists, maybe. Sometimes there's an artist that sticks on for a while, maybe. I don't know. Don't know enough about it, but I definitely respect it. And I, I pick up Starman whenever I, whenever I could see it. 1976. Doctor Strange, 13. Very beautiful. Some Gene Colon art within. So cool. Look at that. Good score. Good eBay score for me. I want to thank uh, my friend Dave once again for 1989's Indiana Jones, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade in uh, News, Newsy. Number one, I got a bunch of Indiana Jones from him. Uh, this looks really cool. Brett uh, Blevins does the art, who I enjoy when I see him. This is his earlier work. I guess in the 90s he started getting really good. Okay, 1984's Marvel Team Up, 147, Spidey, Human Torch. He ditched the black costume uh, recently. Uh, Mick, uh, Mike Esposito, Esposito does the art, and it's okay. Nothing to. Uh, it's not really super awesome or anything, but I enjoy this. It reminds me when I was a kid. Okay, and that's it, you guys. Please click in the link for my trading program. Check out the other uh, uh, YouTube channels, comic book channels. Thank you for being cool to me. I'll see you on Wednesday where I do uh, chaotic comic book cover displays and more with friends. And yeah, I'm out.